We're back with John Walsh and his son Callahan on their latest mission to help capture one of the country's most wanted child sex offenders. Now, Sherman Jackson, that is his name. Sherman Jackson is a serial pedophile who's been on the run for over a decade. His first known victim is the daughter of his former girlfriend, Eileen. Listen to the moment Eileen discovered what Jackson had been doing all along. And at what point did you find out that something was wrong? It was in February of 2010. And his daughter and my daughter, they used to do this independent girls program. And he also used to work there. And they came to me while he was still working and told me what he had been doing. They told me that he touched them and did stuff to them when I'm away. He had a rag for him that he would keep in the closet to wipe them up with in case somebody came over. It's despicable. Call Callahan, a wonderful piece of work, by the way, both you and John. <laughs> How was Sherman Jackson able to hide this abuse from Eileen for so many years? Like so many other child predators, this guy is a master manipulator. He also had much more access to the children because he stayed home when Eileen went to work. Did Sherman Jackson have a criminal record before these reports of abuse? Oh, Dr. Oz, this guy's got a rap sheet a mile long, but I call pedophiles vampires. They, they, hide, in, <clears throat> they hide amongst us and, and do their horrible work in the dark. You know, I have my own 10 most wanted, and I love the U.S. Marshals. I'm, I have the honor of being a sworn U.S. Marshal, John Wayne and Ronald Reagan. I'm proud of that. So, and, and they're the greatest pedophile hunters. But I put this guy, Sherman Jackson, on the top of my list, and he needs to be caught so badly because pedophiles never stop. You and I have talked about this for years. They never stop till you put them in jail or they're dead. So, Callan, exactly how many other children do you think Jackson has abused? So the FBI doesn't have a total count. They, they do know that there are other children unrelated to Sherman Jackson that he abused prior and, and during the abuse of, of his daughter and his two stepdaughters. But the question is, how many children has he abused since then? And how many children has he abused that will never come forward, that will never know uh, that this happened to them? So Sherman Jackson vanished in October 2010 and was placed on the U.S. government's most wanted child sex offender list. Callahan actually spoke with the U.S. Marshal who helped put him on that list. Listen to, to where he says Jackson may be located today. We know that Sherman Jackson quickly left the Warren, Ohio area and he went to Arizona. And we had some information that shortly after being there, maybe six to nine months, he fled Arizona and went to Mexico. In 2015, 16, he fled and went to Jamaica. So it's a possibility he's been going back and forth between Jamaica and Mexico. How is this possible, Callan? How can Jackson have managed to evade authorities for this long? Well, this guy lived a double life here in the States. He was sort of a, a street thug, if you will, on one side. Um, and then on the others, when he was presenting himself to his church group or Eileen, he was more clean cut, this tech savvy computer guy. So he has the street smarts and the computer skills to stay on the run. So, John, I mean, it's, it's so confusing to me because he could be hiding anywhere on the whole planet. We lost track of him pretty much. You believe he'll ever be brought to justice? I do, Dr. Oz. Of those 104, or those 1,040 plus guys I caught, they were caught in 45 countries. I've got Spanish speaking mm -hmm. operators working all the time. I caught all kinds of Jamaican posse guys in Jamaica. I caught 45 guys in Mexico and got them extradited by, back. The world has become a much smaller place, and we have a huge following online. My website is always busy. I'm not giving up on this guy. We're going to find this guy and bring him back to face justice for all these little girls' lives he destroyed. Well, John Callen, Godspeed in your efforts. You've made a huge difference. Thank you. Up next, the first known victim of Sherman Jackson is here, and she has a very powerful message for people out there who may know him. That was Jordan Barnes in the ID series In Pursuit with John Walsh. She is the first known victim of Sherman Jackson, who is one of the U.S. government's most wanted child sex offenders. Jordan joins us now. And I got to say at the outset, I'm very sorry for what you've gone through. And I, I know you realize this, but let me just say it, that you're going to help a lot of people with the story you share today. Yes, thank you. So you say Sherman Jackson lived with you and your family for years. What was he like? And when did you start to see that there was a violent nature to him? Um, 
r right off when you first meet him, if uh, if you weren't part of the family, he was actually quite friendly. He was he was a little funny. Um, he would joke. He would play the game. Uh, but I realized that he was aggressive. Um, shortly shortly after, I just knew he just would get angry. And when I moved to Florida um, with my family, that's when uh, he became violent. I'm going to ask you questions. You only answer them if you're comfortable. How old were you when the sexual abuse started? Um, when it started, I was six or seven. So you don't say anything to your mom about the abuse until one day she calls you to tell you that she found that Sherman was abusing your younger sister, Marie, and his own daughter, Trisha. Tell me about that call. Um, I, I actually never uh, responded. It, it, well, it took me a while for me to even speak. As soon as she asked me that question um, and, and said that, I, I fell to my knees and I just broke down and I, and I cried. I couldn't believe it because um, I thought that uh, if, if, if he was doing this to me, he couldn't have been doing this to um, anyone else. So, you know, I, I just, that never would have, I never thought that. I had no idea. So I felt, I felt to my knees. It's, it's remarkable that he could pull this off and not in any way hint even to your mother that this was going down. And that's how conniving these pedophiles are. How have you managed to cope with all this trauma? Um, steadfast and stay focused. I, uh, I, I knew when I was in high school that I just wanted to turn a negative into a positive. And, uh, thankfully during that time where all of the abuse really amplified, uh, I was saved. And so I knew God, I knew the word and throughout that journey. Um, I really feel like God has been with me. I, I really wish I could say it to me, but it just wasn't, it was really God. He had a plan. Um, and I'm so thankful to be in this position today to just share the, you know, my mission and to really encourage um, all of the survivors or, or perhaps victims to speak up, to stand up and to not be embarrassed or uh, blame yourself for, you know, your, your situation because it's not your fault. you got a strong message for people out there who may know him and know where he is right now. Take it mm -hmm. away. What's your message to them? Um, my message is very clear. You know, if, if you, if you know, um, then you will be succumbed with them. You will have to deal with those actions. And even in, in this life and also, um, with, with another life, you will be responsible for what you have played in, in this part and in this role. And there's karma out there. Jordan, bless you for being strong enough to carry on and for having the strong mission you do. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. If you know anything about this dangerous fugitive, please head to DrOz.com for information on where you can send tips. And for more on this case, you can tune in to In Pursuit with John Walsh on ID and streaming on Discovery+. Plus. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out on new videos to live the good life.